Uh, I'm uncomfortable with this. Oh, stop. Those are just backup bananas. <laughs> oh, hey, Brainiacs. Miss Neutrina here. <clears throat> oh, uh, and uh, Guinea the Pig here. And we welcome you to join us during various scientific investigations and explorations. We do? Did you know that nearly every cell of every living thing has DNA in it? That's right. This incredibly small chain of genetic code lurks in most living matter, including fruit. It turns out that we can extract DNA from berries, kiwis, and bananas. You have guessed it. We're going to isolate the DNA from a large chunk of banana cells and get this down to a science. Down to a science. First, of course, we need a banana. Make sure you have a nice ripe one and place it sans peel into a Ziploc bag like this. We want to give it a good mashing for about a minute. Now this is a part I can help out with. Fill about a half cup with heated water and one teaspoon of salt. The salt neutralizes the negative charges on the DNA, which makes the DNA strands stick together. We then pour the salty solution into the bag of mashed bananas. Make sure it mixes well, being careful not to drop or spill. Now it's time for the dish soap. Why do we need to clean the mush salty banana? <laughs> no, silly. Listen, the soap is used to break down the lipids that make up the plasma membrane that's concealing the DNA. Oh, right. That whole thing. We want to add about a half a teaspoon of dish soap. Then gently mix together for about five minutes. Now that the DNA has been broken free, we need to separate the liquid from some of the more solid matter. For this, we're gonna use a paper coffee filter. We then pour the entire solution through the filter. Be patient. This may take a while. Ugh, wake me up when it's over. With our more liquidy solution left behind, we are ready for our final step, adding some alcohol. Wait, what? What are we talking about here? Sambuca, cognac, a Negroni? Less tasty than that. 91% isopropyl alcohol, otherwise known as rubbing alcohol. Oh, I woke up for this. And it's best if chilled. So we pour some of this cold alcohol slowly down the side of the beaker. We just need enough to cover the top layer completely, so a few centimeters will do. After a few moments, we start to see some cloudy material starting to show up towards the top. This is the DNA precipitating, that is, separating from the solution. Since DNA is way too small to see by itself, this procedure will clump together countless DNA strands. And while mostly DNA, there is also some RNA, proteins, and other leftover bits that got dissolved. It's like somebody hocked a loogie in your glass there. <laughs> you can even tease it out with a toothpick. See, Guinea? It's just banana DNA precipitate. I don't care what you call it. It still skeeves me. Ugh. Well, you know, if you're not part of the solution, then you're part of the precipitate. Oh. Is that supposed to be funny? Well, I've heard that science says that a human eats more bananas than monkeys. Really? What was the methodology? Wow, when was the last time you ate a monkey, huh? <laughs> well, there you have it, Brainiacs. Thanks for watching. If you like this, like it. If you have a question or comment, drop it below. Get it? Humans? Eating monkeys! <laughs> oh, oh, I'm rich. Until next time, Brainiacs, Miss Neutrina out. John is too busy. I crack myself up. <laughs>